Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I must say we, we are playing a very tough match against a team that has improved in leaps and bounds uh, and a team that uh, made sure that we don't score a goal uh, in their backyard which uh, makes this assignment a little bit of a tough one for both teams because uh, we know what uh, Pirates is capable of and they also know what you are capable of. But the most interesting thing is that uh, the team has not been scoring enough, uh, I mean our opposition. But uh, since they changed the shape a little bit in the previous match, uh, then they created a lot of opportunities which I believe they could have taken more than, than the 2 nil lead that they took. And that uh, presents a new case study now because all along they've been playing with three centre-backs and this time around uh, they felt maybe they needed to have a little bit of a punch and be a little bit aggressive, which uh, is something that we have to deal with. But uh, be that as it may, we, we believe we've got a team that is capable of coming out of this match with a result, uh, obviously with a lot of humility and respect. We, we are not going to take this game for granted. We, we know the stakes are high. Uh, yes, one will say, now that we are playing at home, any goal we concede uh, might result in us bombing out of, of the cup. And that is true. But uh, on the other side, as Sundowns, every match we play, we always go to that match with a mentality to win. So in this space, it doesn't matter whether we, we concede or, or what happens, but if at the end of the game we have scored more than the opposition, that is the most important thing because we always want to win the match. Uh, when we did not win in, in Orlando, we did not feel good. Had we had a 1-1 draw, we would still not feel good. We would have, had we had a 2-2 two, 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 two draw, we would still not feel good because we go to every match with one, with one thing in mind, to try and make sure that we dominate the pitch, we dominate the ball, we dominate all the metrics that we think can always help in making sure that uh, the outcome of the game is under your control, not dependent on what other people are doing. So we know it's not going to be an easy one. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Uh, let's take questions from the floor just by a show of hands. No, man, uh, Handele is a big boy. Uh, he's not a small boy. Uh, and to be honest, I don't think he played bad in the previous match. Uh, I just think we, when we wanted to inject a little bit of intensity, we, we made a choice of taking him out, but it was not necessarily because he had a bad performance. Uh, and when you say he was humbled, uh, I think maybe you're talking about uh, what Salen did to him. But the truth of the matter is, in football, you, you can expect the same thing. You also did the same thing inside our box and tripled opponents there. And they were, the opponents were not humbled. You know, it's, it's football. So we must accept sometimes in football that uh, uh, in the line of duty, you, you will either be tripled or you will either be embarrassed. But uh, that's the line of duty. If you are a teacher, you, you, you must expect that you might get dirty because of chalk in your hands. And if you're in football, you might, you might get injured, you might get dribbled, you might get embarrassed in one way or the other. Or you might concede a stupid goal as a goalkeeper. It, it happens in football. So uh, I, I'm not even perturbed by what happened to him because I know he's a very strong boy and a strong character uh, that probably is itching for, for the next assignment, which is probably very good and plays to our advantage. Coach, let's move on to Tepo, UTA. Hi, Coach. So, in terms of uh, taking the game to to Uruguay, there's been debates in terms of um, lockdowns, and that's where that sometimes is what's best. And the thinking behind taking the game to Uruguay instead of lockdowns. <clears throat> we are a growing brand, and we must we must acknowledge that and appreciate it. As a team, we are trying to, to try to conquer as much space as possible within the country and uh, Polowan has also proven to be very good for us uh, in many assignments that we have had in that space. 
So I think it is a very good choice and a choice that was also guided by the quality of the pitch and the turf uh, and Sundowns wants to play in a very good pitch and uh, probably at this stage I don't think there is any other pitch that is better than that one. Uh, for us as a growing brand it is also important to, to try and encompass as many, as many people as we can in trying to make sure that we make them feel at home and feel part of uh, this successful team. All right, uh, Mazola, the CPC. Um, Coach, I just wanted to ask if there's an update on, on Peter Shamilin, uh, also if, if there is one, just the possibility of going such a big game without Peter, who hardly ever actually gets, gets injured. It's, been, it's a bit strange to see him without Peter. Uh, to be honest, I would not want to talk much about uh, our players in, in our camp. Uh, the truth is, the, the only biggest uh, thing that I'm happy about is that we tried to see how the team can perform without Peter in the last three matches. And we have scored 16 goals in three matches. And uh, for us, that is very important. Uh, as to whether he'll be part of this one or not, at this stage, I, can, I cannot be sure. Uh, we did rest him over the last two or three matches uh, because we, we, we also want to have him as fresh as possible and probably he might come in as a big surprise for this match. Uh, at this stage it's very difficult to, to say whether he's in or out because uh, the specialists uh, have to give a call in that space but his condition is still okay in terms of his physical condition so we just have to wait and see what, what comes out of from the specialists. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on to Karabo. Good afternoon, coach. Uh, I think over the last uh, two or three games, I've seen a lot of, you know, uh, I wouldn't say position change, but, you know, Modiba coming more inside as well as uh, uh, Tapero as well. Is it, is it now a case of Marisa now it's the players no longer play the position, but they play the game in the match? Uh, structurally from our, our approach and uh, what we see from the opposition, we, we do make uh, decisions or calls. Uh, either we want our fullbacks to invert, either we want one of the two fullbacks to invert and the other one is high and wide. Uh, on, on, on Modiba being inverted in some instances, it has also been based on how the opposition structure themselves. Uh, maybe to, to cite one example, uh, Pirates has, has always been playing with one striker and two number 10s. And when they've got those two number 10s behind uh, the striker, then you know your two center backs are already occupying one striker and you've got a, a, a plus one in that space. But you've got uh, an elephant in the house with the two 10s that are behind the striker and you only have probably a six at that time. So it becomes important that a six is complemented by either a fullback from one side or, or an eight. It depends on, on what we want to see at that time because maybe if we want our fullback high and wide, then an eight can occupy that space. So it's something that we've been doing uh, with, with uh, all the players that have played. The Lyle has also been inverting a lot. Uh, Mdau also invests a lot and helps us a lot in our rest defense. But Modiba, it, it looks a little bit more interesting because uh, even in play, in possession of the ball, he, he makes some of the right decisions and he looks like he's playing an eight sometimes. So it depends on what we see uh, and, and what we think is going to happen in that match. Now that Pirates has changed the shape uh, and we believe after scoring two goals, they might stick with that shape because I think it's, it's the best shape for them in terms of them being offensive and them making sure that they, they, they create scoring opportunities. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's a shape that can give us a lot of chances. Thank you. All right, as we move on, I'm looking for new hands. I've noted you, uh, Tepo. All right, uh, Benjamin, Benjamin. Nirenda. Coach Benjamin Nirenda, Football Line. Hey, coach, uh, after the game at uh, Orlando Stadium, when it finished 0-0, you considered yourself that you had no shots at goal. 
and looking at the way they have changed their system, as you have said, they changed their system when they played golden arrows. What are your chances of taking shots and going and winning this game in the second leg? No, man, to be, to be honest, I think this, uh, this issue of no, no shots at goals was, was taken to the wrong, wrong angle. I think if you look at that game very closely, uh, you will realize that there were many instances where we should have been in even scoring positions than, than just merely talking about shots at goals. If I can cite a few, uh, the two instances where Mudao was found alone in the, in the fab, three instances in fact, first half, Mudao was found uh, alone in the, in, in the far post uh, where he had uh, terrible maybe execution in terms of crosses. Uh, those could have easily resulted into something. And there was one ball that was played by Ronwin for Peter who could even have left the ball to go and he already would have been facing the goalkeeper first half and he received the ball backwards. That's a, a very big, big chance uh, to, to score a goal, not even to take a shot at goal. Uh, you look at uh, Mailula's uh, inclusion in the second half uh, and even Peter second half probably in the last stages of the game where he was released by Mukwena and he was also released by Zungo in the far post but his first touch took him to the wrong side if it took him inside probably it would have asked Nda whether you are fouling or you are letting him to go and take a shot at goal so I think this has been taken too too far this issue of uh, of the shots at goals but maybe it's, it's it, it ignites a bit of fire even in our team to say this time around, we'll take shots at goals. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> as we move along to Neo here, my left hand side. Uh, sure, Coach. Uh, Neo from the mm -hmm. Fan Blog. Um, coach, you speak about Puniso. Um, I thought yesterday he, he had a fantastic game uh, defensively and also in the build up of play, like with the combinations. But the final ball again. And going back to the two, two or three situations that you speak up about uh, against Pirates in the first leg, where it seems like there are situations that you guys have worked for, uh, where you overload on the left and uh, look for the double, for the direct no dodge to the right, and then he, he missed, he, he, his decision making wasn't the best or his execution. But my question is do you then um, overlook, for lock up, lock up a better word, uh, his final third effort because of how brilliant he is? In, the, in other departments of his game? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't think he's, he's terrible in the final third. Yeah? He's probably one of the best fullbacks in the country, if, I, if I'm honest. Not because I'm talking, because he's my player. Uh, I think in the games against Le Pass, I had two assists. And yesterday, if you looked at the game very closely, uh, there was one quick free kick that we took and he got inside and in front of the fullback and he played a very good uh, cutback. But unfortunately both uh, I think Gaston and Tebza were already ahead of the ball. But the ball where it was put yesterday, I just wish he can put such a ball on Saturday because I believe it will give us a shot at goal. So I, 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 I must also speak on, on his behalf because sometimes players uh, playing in, in a stage like Orlando Stadium, packed to capacity the way it was. Remember that Mutao has been at Sundowns probably now. He's uh, in his third season, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and that atmosphere at Orlando, it's something that he has not seen, if, if we can be honest, because we played two seasons without the crowd. And for him to, to be... In a match like that, it was another new experience, which was also good for his growth and development. And uh, immediately after that match, I think he has come back very strong and improved tremendously in his uh, final third entries. Because Mudao is one fullback that has got a dribble, a fullback that has got a pass, a fullback that is strong aerially, a fullback that is that has got a very good cutback. Uh, the only area of his game that still needs a lot of attention is when he makes a decision to put, to put a cross because a cross sometimes it, it works we have scored a very good goal from uh, Modao and Pavol last season if I remember very well 
against arrows, if I'm not mistaken. So his crossing ability still has question marks, but a lot of cutbacks that he plays uh, are always dangerous because he's got the nerve, the right nerve in the final third when he decides to go for a cutback, which is more of a pass than just a cross. So personally, I'm, I'm optimistic that if he's available for the Saturday game, probably is, is one guy that will help us to have more shots at goals. Uh, moving right along to Colin. Shots at goals, coach. Yes. <laughs> Colin Miles to his friend. Um, lately, even with the trends in the next time, we see that uh, the small investments in defenders. And we see the still ways that are happening in the PSL. So maybe we're not giving credit ways due to us defenders across the board. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, want to say much about defenders in, in the PSL and what is happening uh, with the goals not being scored. I think it's, it's more of team tactics more than the defenders as such, because most teams are, are going for a low block, which uh, means uh, even their strikers, they are not pu putting pressure on the ball. So by the time you enter the opposition half, you are re already facing 10 of the opponents. And if we then give credit to the last line, uh, probably we, we, would not be, we would not be doing justice to the game. Because the other thing that we must also be very much aware of is that most of these teams, they are playing with three center backs. And when you play with three center backs, it's also a sign that you have question marks on the ability of your center backs uh, if you were to play two. And uh, when you play three, you want somebody to be a policeman there and, and, and make sure that he cleans whatever mess that the other defenders do. So I wouldn't really, really want to say uh, I want to give as much credit to, to the defenders, but rather I would say I would, I would give more credit to the defensive shapes that teams uh, adopt. Uh, you look at uh, Richards Bay, look at the number of goals they've scored this season. But look at the position that they are on the lock. Uh, you look at probably almost all the teams in the top eight, how many goals they've scored this season. And that, for me, is a hindrance to, to, to what should bring people to the stadiums to watch matches. Because I think we, we, are, not, we are not offensive enough as, uh, as the PSL. Uh, most teams uh, are afraid to open themselves up just looking for that 30% uh, uh, possession and 30% possibility of getting a set piece and a counter attack to, to win the match. And that's why teams are winning matches with one nil, even if the, I, I saw another stats uh, uh, when I was looking at the stats yesterday where a team won the match because they had one shot on target and they scored the whole match. You know, remembering that we also did not have even one shot on target. So maybe not when we get that one shot on target, uh, God will be with us to win the match. So m what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to, to say I'm not too comfortable with the mentality in, in our league. I know it's also uh, because people are scared to lose their jobs and they can't play the football that they've grew up enjoying because most of the coaches, they can play a very good brand of football, uh, a little bit expansive to try and dominate the ball, dominate the field. But because people are saying, hey, I would rather not lose or I must make it difficult for me to lose, then uh, teams go for that one nil, uh, one counter attack, one set piece and all that. So for me, it's, it's not my, the football that I would like to to see in our country because I believe our country is blessed with a lot of talent and when you give a little bit more freedom and uh, in play you see a little bit more and probably that is what I'm seeing with uh, uh, teams that are introducing a lot of youngsters now and youngsters that are really bringing things that we've not thought of. There's this boy that Supersport brought, I think he's 24, he's only getting a chance to play now as a winger, uh, Maswangani or something. Good players and you want teams to try. Amazulu, I saw they introduced a boy called Ndlovu. Uh, now they are even playing the Ngobo boy. Uh, and, and I can see the, 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 the good football that our country has because you want uh, to see this nice contest amongst teams. And I would not want to, to be 
somebody who advocates the defensive play because I believe football is more interesting when, when teams score goals. All right, uh, Lawrence. about uh, coaches scared of losing their jobs. Uh, yesterday, Ramovich was speaking about the lack of accountability from officials uh, because there's been obviously some creating mistakes from referees in the past few days. Going to such a high profile match, do you agree with the sentiment that some officials get away with murder um, in the league and in the cup competitions? Hey, you know, there are some questions you, you must not answer when you are playing a big match, you know. I think I should run away from this one. Uh, but the truth is some officials have made glaring mistakes and uh, they have cost people a lot of points and some points uh, that could have made a difference in many teams. Uh, there is one team that I know that in the past two, three matches uh, had maybe three or four clear scoring opportunities if not goal scored already, but uh, no, let me keep quiet. <laughs> okay, Tembo Shabalala. Um, coach, I've, I've picked up something where you, 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 you playing against Pirates is a headache that you love to have as a coach. And whenever you speak about Pirates, you go into detail um, to a, and, and it's felt that even banter is created. When you said Kabasi plays in a pattern like that of pirates, it created a whole lot of um, you know, social media banter and misunderstood. What does it mean to Sundowns playing against pirates, especially on this must win match uh, for both teams? As opposed to playing any other team in the PSL. No, man, before I, I, go, f I go far on this issue uh, of me. Comparing Pirates uh, and Le Passa, I think it was blown out of proportion by you guys. You, you come to press conferences with ulterior motives. Because all I was saying there, I was talking about the shape. Uguti, Le Passa has got three center backs, they have got two wing backs, and they have got two central midfielders, one nine and two tens, just like Pirates has been playing. I was not saying. Pirates is at the level of Leopards. But because, you know, when you're a sport journalist, you have a responsibility to educate the country and help the country, not to always try to bring sensationalism into, into the game, because one day it will come back and bite you. So if you are objective in your analysis and you are critical, and if you don't understand what one is saying, and you just come out openly and ask me, what do you mean by this? It makes it easier than than wanting to always create a rift amongst, amongst uh, teams and coaches and all that, because that's all I was referring to, which in as much as this opposition is not uh, probably very strong, but structurally it will help us to practice for a match that we are going to, pray for, to, play, for, to play with Pirates, because structurally they are structured almost the same way. And that was, that was for me, uh, not comparing the quality of the two teams, but comparing the structures that the two teams were using over the past few matches. And that is what I was saying. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I like to play big matches. I don't want to lie to you. I, I, I hate these matches where when you go to the match, you are already expected to win. Because those matches, that's where you get pleasantly surprised and humbled. You know, but when you are playing a big match, you know uh, everybody is intrinsically motivated to play that match from the player's side. And you as a coach, you dig a little bit deeper. You, you want to try and understand exactly what makes this particular team to be regarded as a big team as compared to other teams that maybe are regarded as smaller teams. So it, it makes you to, to dig a little bit deeper and be more meticulous in looking at exactly what is happening. Uh, that makes them to, be, to have the respect that they have because you, you, you want to win. You want to win that match as a coach. The players want to win that match, but also you have a responsibility to strike the balance because sometimes uh, the desire to win the match makes you to be over anxious, which I think in the previous match in Orlando, our team was made some 
elementary mistakes because we're too anxious, maybe trying too hard to make an impression. So the match like Pir with, with Pirates now, in, honestly speaking, I believe Pirates is playing good football. And uh, I will not want to take that away from them. And I also believe we play good football. And that, as, as somebody who is a student of the game and who likes good football, I want those matches. I don't want matches where the other one is sitting, is not, does not want to play, the other one is playing. I want a game of football where it's a contest and everybody wants to, to get the result, maybe by dominating the ball and dominating the pitch. And yesterday, in the previous match, Pirates really, really did what they were supposed to do to win the match. They got more chances to win the match in the previous match. And that, for me, is always uh, an inspiration to, to say, what did we do wrong? And we, we dig deeper and see how best can we improve in that aspect. But truth be told, it's a, it's a match that you also have the interest to watch. Eh? All right. Um, Tepo, Tobias, 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 Coach, this is obviously a final before the final. I, mean, um, I remember in the first leg, you said, you told us that you expected a lot of goals in that game. But there were no goals, but uh, it was very interesting for a 0 0 score line. This time around, Konozo gives the Coach, uh, what are you expecting for, for the second leg? Thank you. I wish I could have a specific answer for exactly what I'm expecting in, in this game because uh, my, 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 the metrics that are there for both teams uh, create a very interesting argument because for Pirates to, to really score a lot of goals probably they, they have to open the game up and, uh, but Pirates again when, when, when you look at what they've done throughout the season where they have not dominated the game, that's when they have become very dangerous, where they give you the ball and only hope to punish you when you make mistakes. Transitionally, they are one of the quickest teams and they get to the box as, as early as four seconds sometimes. So th that is the interesting part. But when, when they played against uh, Golden Arrows, where they, they managed to score more than they normally do, uh, they really put their first foot forward. They were very initiative, they pressed from the top, they wanted to dominate possession, they wanted to dominate probably all the metrics, and they did very well in that match. Uh, which of the two Pirates I want to play against, I, I will not lie to you and say which one, because both of them have got their own pros and cons, but I think that is what makes for a very interesting contest. All right, uh, Coach, thank you very much. I think we're going to have to end it here. And uh, all the best for Saturday. Thank you.